All right, in this section, we're going to take a look at models, and models are used to uh, they're used to interact with data, whether that be a database or uh, maybe a, a RESTful API or something like that, even hard-coded values. Uh, it's it's just used to hold the data or just grab the data from something. All right, so what we want to do here is we have our registration form, and we want to submit it and enter our fields into the database and we need to do that through a model alright so we have our form and it's going to submit to the users controller and we're going to do some validation on it and if the validation passes then we want to insert the data now of course we need to create a users model uh, but to do this we can call this user model and models uh, it's not obviously it's not mandatory but I recommend using singular for models and, and plural for controllers so we have a users controller but we'll have a user model alright so user model and then a function or a method that we want to run which will be create member all right, so that's going to call the create member method in the user model. All right, now instead of just calling it, I want to wrap it in an if statement uh, so that we can redirect. Uh, we can get a message saying you are now registered and redirect. All right, so let's put this in an if statement. All right, so we're going to redirect back to home all right home index but I don't want it to just redirect we want to um, we want to create a message to let the person know that they're actually registered and the most common way to do that with code igniter is to use flash data and that's that's given to us by the session library all right so we can say this session set flash data all right and in here we're going to have two arguments we're going to have basically a key so we'll say registered and it's just basically a key to identify this message and we're just going to say uh, you are now registered and can log in Alright, so it's going to set this, this flash data, this message, and redirect to the index page, the home index page. So I'll save this, and that's the first part of, this is setting the data. Now we need to get it, and we need to get it in the, in the um, uh, index view, because this is going to go to home index, uh, excuse me, the home view. So we'll go to our home view, and right above this here, we want to call that message but we only want it call it if it's set alright so we have to do first do an if statement we'll say if um, I'm gonna say if this session flash data and in here we want to put whatever that key was in our case was registered all right, and I'm just doing the shorthand so that we can just uh, use tags on every line here. All right, so what do we want to do if that's if that's found? If the registered flash data is found, then we want to echo. Um, let's see, we want to echo this session flash data. So this session flash data registered and I, what I want to do is is wrap this in the the um, bootstrap uh, classes for the alerts which we have somewhere in here where do we have it right here 
and copy that and just paste this in here like this all right so if we're registered actually you know what this shouldn't say danger because this is a, a helpful message a success message so I think that that works I think that will make it green all right so let's save that and get back to this deal with the model all right so what we need to do is create a user model so in the models folder we want to create a new file and save it as user model dot php all right so this is similar to setting up a controller we get to say uh, class user model extends not ci controller but ci model all right so we need a public function called create member all right so what we need to do is we need to grab all the fields that we submit and uh, if you have any experience with PHP you probably know that this goes through post data all right and we can grab the post data if you're dealing with just PHP without code igniter we could get it in this this post super global so we could have like post first name in code igniter we actually can use uh, the input helper which we have auto loaded and we can use this input post and then and then whatever first name and that's what we're gonna do alright and we could do this we're gonna create an array of the post data and we could do this in the controller uh, but it's good practice to try to keep your controller thin uh, and then have most of the the, the um, data manipulation go on in the model. So it's I mean it's really just preference, um, but I'm just going to put it in the model. So I'm going to create an array. Okay, so in this array, we want to. Um, we want to set the, the database table name equal to uh, the post values. All right, so the first one we have is first name. And that's going to come from this input post, this input post first name. Okay. And we'll actually just copy this. All right, so we have last name. And these here, these fields need to match your database, your database fields, okay, which we have right here. Last name, email, um, what else, username, and password. Now, we don't want to store just the plain password, which is which is what this will give us right here. So what I want to do is I want to encrypt it, and that's pretty easy to do. I'm just going to cut this out, and still in this method, I want to create a new variable called ENC password for encrypted password, and we're going to set that equal to MD5, and then wrap the input the post input all right so very simple this md5 just encrypts this from plain text uh, to being encrypted so we're not 
we're not adding just regular text passwords into the database, which would be really stupid. So it's easy enough to do. So it's going to be ink password. That's what's going to be submitted into the, into the database. All right, let's see. Let's make this look a little nicer. Right, take that last comma off. All right, so there's our data array. All right, so now what we want to do is um, create a variable. You can call it anything. I'm going to say, actually, we'll call it query. And what we're going to do here is we're going to use active record, um, which is basically a, a helper, a database helper, so that we don't have to write long database strings or SQL strings. So I'm just going to actually pull over the the documentation for the active record class and we can do all different types of crud we can do create read update and delete or select insert update and delete alright so this the simplest um, of this class is the is to select fields from the database and we can do this with this db get alright so here we're just creating a variable called query we're setting it to this db get and then the name of the table and it's the same as, as saying select all from whatever table All right, uh, and then we would just say um, we could return the, the result which I'll, I'll show you later on and we can add in where statements um, let's see join we can join different tables so for instance we're uh, getting data from the blogs table but we want to also join the comments table alright so we'll be doing that as well with the lists and tasks uh, this is this db where you can basically just say this db where name equals joe or whatever um, so that's kind of a lot of information but let's just uh, take it slow. So what we need to do now is an insert. So let's find that. All right, inserting data, pretty simple. We've already created our, our data array with the table names and the post values. So basically this is all we need to do right here. So if we just copy that, well actually we want to say query equals that and this will be the users table and actually let's just change this to insert alright and we just want to return insert alright so if this goes through and returns uh, then the user has been created alright so let's save that and this return insert is going to allow us to have this if statement so if insert then you know give a success message alright so let's save that and let's try it out you may have a couple errors at first so let's see actually I just want to make sure I didn't insert anything no you can see our users table is totally empty alright so Username, we'll say admin. Alright, so the username needs to be at least six characters. Okay. Um, you know what? Let's change that. So, username, we'll say, has to be four characters in the, the database. I mean, I'm sorry, the password. Alright. Alright, so looks like we have an error, and the reason we're getting this is we didn't load the user model. Alright, so what we need to do is we could just say this load user model, but I want to auto load it. So I'm going to go to my config folder and then autoload.php 
and where it says auto load model we just want to throw in user model alright so hopefully it works now alright so you are now registered and can log in so let's go ahead to PHP my admin and reload the users table and here's our, our information we have first name last name email username and an encrypted password alright so this definitely adds security to your uh, your app and then we have the registration date which is the exact date and time that we made this submission alright so that is a good example of an insert query so now what I want to do is look at a select statement because we need to log in which means we need to validate our username and password against the database and what I'm going to do is paste in the login function and I'm pasting it in because we've already dealt with pretty much everything that's here so it's kind of redundant to type it all out again alright so we're just setting a couple rules here validation rules if the form has not been submitted we're not going to do anything because this login controller doesn't have its own view it's actually just inserted into the template um, through the layout so we don't need to show a view we don't need to do anything alright so if it passes or if it's submitted sorry then we're putting our post variables into a regular variable username and password and with the registration we, we did this in the model but you can I only did it this way to show you that we can do it in the controller as well it's really preference and what we need to do is we're setting a user ID um, to this user model login user alright so this is gonna call the method login user and in order to to access these in our model we need to pass them through as arguments alright so then we're saying basically this is only going to happen uh, we're only going to get an ID if the login is correct so here we're saying if the login is correct then we're creating a data of user array a uh, user data array which includes the user ID username and uh, a boolean a logged in true or false and we're setting that to true because we validated it against the database and then we're just setting a session we're setting uh, user data in a session so what this means is that um, as long as we have a session we can check to see if it's true and if it is then we can display data or pages that only someone that's logged in can see right we can actually just say if logged in do this if not do this so that's I mean session class is pretty easy and we've already actually used the session class in the flash data um, function alright so let's see we can save that and what we need to do now is create the login user function in the model alright so we'll go to user model say public function login user and we also want to include the parameters here as well alright so the first thing we want to do is convert the password to um, to an, an encrypted password so we can match against the encrypted value in the database alright so we're just gonna say ENC password is equal to MD5 and then the plain text password alright and let's see we just want to validate against the database so we have to perform a where clause alright using active record so where clause we're gonna say this DB uh, where and we're gonna say where username in the database is equal to username that we typed in alright and we'll do the same thing for the password except we want to use the encrypted version 
okay so those are the where clauses that we want to check now we're gonna say result is gonna be equal to this DB get and we want to put the name of the table which is users all right and then we want to say if result num rows is equal to one there should only be one value one um, match because we're not going to be able to have duplicate usernames um, so obviously it'll be one all right so if result num rows is equal to one then we want to return result row zero because there'll only be one which is zero because all objects and arrays start at zero all right we want to return the ID that's all we're doing here is returning the user ID uh, and we want to say else so if there is if there's not a row found we just want to return false all right so let's go over this we pass in a username and a password to the function we encrypt the password we call two where clauses we're saying where the username in the database is equal to the username we typed in and the password in the database is equal to the encrypted password that we type in alright so now here we're saying this result variable is equal to this db get users alright so this is going to be filled uh, this num rows will be filled it'll equal one if these match okay and then here we're just returning the um, the ID row alright so if the user's ID is one it'll return a one um, else if there are no rows found if none of these match then we're just going to return false and back in the controller um, let's see where are we log in which is right here so we're, we're setting user ID equal to whatever we return here if it's the ID it's the ID if it's false then it's false we're saying here if it's not false if it's set then we're gonna add the data to a session and we're gonna start a session and redirect if it comes back false then we're just gonna set a message saying login failed and redirect so in both cases we're redirecting to the home page so let's save this in the model and let's just see if this is working okay so nothing happened but nothing happened but we don't have an actual message we need to set a message here so when we set the session I want to set a message and we'll say login success we'll say you are now logged in and then in home index which was using the home view copy that login success all right let's see if that works all right so we are logged in so obviously we're logged in we want to make it so that this box doesn't show uh, the input fields when we're logged in we want it to just have a logout button so first we need to create a logout button so let's go to the login view so go to views users login and we want to check if we're logged in or not and we can use the session the session uh, class to do this so we'll just say PHP um, 
if this session user data if this session user data logged in yeah so that's all, actually all we need we want an else PHP else all right so if we are logged in we want to show a logout button if we're not then we want to show the form which I will grab from here cut it and put it in here all right, so let's save, and now if we reload, we shouldn't see the form. All right, good. So what we need to do up here is just create a logout button. I'm sorry, not a logout button, but a logout form. So I'm actually just going to paste something in here. All right, so what this box is going to show when we're logged in, it's going to say, you are logged in as, and then what we're doing is calling the username value from the session, okay? So whatever the user's name is, username is going to show. And then we're just opening another form here uh, that goes to user slash logout. And it's just going to have one input, which will be a button, an input button. Uh, and that's really it. So let's save that. All right, so now it just says you are logged in as admin. Now we need to create the controller um, function logout. And uh, a little off topic, but I would definitely suggest that you add comments to your code. Um, each each controller, I'd suggest you have a, a little comment saying what it does. Uh, I'm not doing it just because for for time issues, but it's definitely re recommended. All right, so for logout, what we want to do uh, is we want to unset all the user data. All right, so. Unset session data, and we can do this session unset user data, um, and then we can have the value which will is logged in. So we're going to unset that login value, and we're going to unset all the set all the values, which are the user ID and the user name. All right, and then we want to say this session sess destroy. All right. So that should kill all the all the session data and the session itself. Then we want a message. Let's just copy this here. Uh, this isn't going to be an error. So this will say, we'll name this logged out. been logged out we'll redirect and now we just gotta catch that flash data message in the home view and let's change this to logged out all right so let's try this out if we reload log out all right it logged us out it just didn't show the message so with logged out logged out oh you know what i think it has something to do with killing the session in this function so i mean we can tell when we logged out because of the box here 
uh, but I think that it's messing with the flash data when we when we kill the session. So we'll just keep it as it is and just have. I mean, obviously we're logged out now. So uh, that's really it. Um, actually, one more thing. When we're logged in, I don't want this register link to show. I want it to say hello and then our username. So that is in the layout, the main layout right here. And I'm just going to paste this in. Okay, so if we're logged in, it's going to say welcome. If not, it'll have the register link. So let's reload. And you can see it says welcome admin. Okay, we log out, register. All right, so our, lo our login registration system is pretty much done. Um, what we need to do next is create the lists, uh, the list and task functionality.